All right, let's look at definite integrals as the limit of a Riemann sum and kind of finish this up. All right, using a right Riemann sum with four equal subintervals to approximate that integral, write your answer in terms of f of x if f of x is 2 to the x. So I'm, I know that you know to have know how to find the actual value, but for the purposes of what we're doing today, I'm not wanting you to find the actual value, but let's just draw, as you have learned, I'm going to find, it says equal subintervals, so I am going to find the common width, would be 1 minus, nope, 3 minus 1, all over 4, so again, I get a width of 1 half, now, 2 to the x, I know that that is a function that looks like this, an exponential growth. I'm going to go from 1 right here, and then to 3, I will have 4 subintervals, so 1.5, 2, 2.5, and 3. Could have made my things a little smaller, but that's all right. It says a right Riemann sum, so... My right upper corner will be on f of x. And I can do my drawing. I'm just going to have a little, little slanted guys there, but that's okay. So I will end up with this. So if I have that, then what is the integral going to be? the integral from 1 to 3 of f of x. So, of 2 to the x. And uh, dx is going to be equal to what? And again, I know that you, you would say, well, I, I'm going to pull out, in this case, I know I can pull out a common width. Um, and I can, I'll do that, that's fine. I can pull that common width, and then I would have what? I would have f of 1.5. So again, I'm, I'm purposely, you're saying, isn't that just 2 to the 1.5? I'm wanting you to write it this way for the purposes of what we're doing. f of... So f of... The next box would be f of 2. The next box would be f of 2.5. And finally, the last box is f of 3. Again, I'm not, I know that you can get the actual answer, but what, what are we trying to get to? Just, just follow me for a second. Let me write that a different way. I'm going to pull out that common width, but how did we know that this was 1.5? I mean, this kind of seems like a stupid question. You said, well, I uh, did f of, I took the 1, and I knew that the width was 1 half, so I added one of the widths. So I did 1 plus 1 half. If you will, you did one of the widths, so you did that. Okay. Plus... Well, how did you know this one was 2? Well, you took the 1 and you added 2 of the widths. So you did 1 half times 2. And down the line, I would have f of 1 plus 1 half times 3. And f of 1 plus 1 half times 4, which that makes sense. That gives me f of 3. So I could write that back when you did a summation notation. You have to remember what that looks like. I could say that is the sum. Remember, sigma means sum. And I'll, I'll fill this in just to explain. You have f of 1 plus 1 half times what? Well, it changes from 1 to 2 to 3. That's your index. So I'll use an i and your i is going 1 to 4. Now, you also had that 1 half. Friends, that 1 half, that can go here. I'll write it here for now, and it can go on the outside of that sigma as well, so I could write it both places. So this would be the sigma representation 
of this thing. Now remember, that's th that would be an approximation. That wouldn't be the actual area under the curve. That would be an approximation. What could I do to make that approximation better? And by now you're like, increase the number of rectangles. Exactly. I could go, instead of doing four, I could do eight rectangles. Instead of doing eight, I could do 16. Okay, that would make the approximation better. Well, what about this question? I don't want it to be better. I want it to be it. What would I need to do to make the integral, uh, the, 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 the Riemann sum, a actual value, not an approximation, not an over, not an underestimate, but an actual value. And you say, well, what does this class all come down to? Your favorite limits. You would take the limit and let the number of rectangles go to infinity. And that, my friends, is what we have here. So if I would have started with this, you'd be like, what the heck is this? Well, now you look at it and go, oh, snap, I get this totally. I totally see it. What this is, that is the width, is it not? You're like, oh, B minus A over N, okay. Remember how we had our integral and we did B minus A over N? That's the width. Notice that, what is this starting value? What was, what, uh, I just said it, Dad, come in. What, what is that A? That's going to be kind of like your starting value. Did you notice on that picture? Okay, how I started at 1 and then I added, this was my starting, my kind of my lower bound there. Do notice that this and this are the same, okay, because you're just, you're adding the widths, right? And you can see that in the formula, how this is the width, and you, you have your index. Now, they just called this f of c, I just saying some point as the, as, think about it, as the number of rectangles are infinitely small, then my goodness, the x value within that could be pretty much anything in there and so they can kind of replace that with it and then delta x is going to be the widths are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as you increase the number of rectangles and then that gives me my dx so a riemann sum if you take the limit as the number of rectangles go to infinity of a riemann sum it is equal to the actual area under the curve and so these questions show up on AP you're like why is she talking about all this because of these questions right here that I've seen many many times on AP and if I just started with this and we didn't do you're like why do we do those approximations when we're eventually going to get the actual value anyway well you've got to understand what you're doing when you're finding the actual value and so this question says, write the integral for the expression below. Well, it looks complicated, but what I want you to see is, oh, this is just a Riemann sum. I am summing up rectangles. This, rect this thing is the width, and this is the height. And remember, the heights, that was kind of the F of, right? Now I go in a certain order. I usually, I, I, if it's if it's a problem like this, this is what what I do. I go, okay. If I know my width is three over n, remember how this was b minus a. So what does that tell me that that's a three? That tells me because these are on usually on multiple choice. Or they are on multiple choice. The bounds differ by three. So if I had an answer choice that said zero to one. I eliminate it. Can't be that because my bounds are going to differ by three. So I eliminate all the choices that that uh, is not true. So when I write my bounds, I know, okay, they're going to differ by three. Now, where do I, what's, does that mean it goes zero to three? Not necessarily because remember this guy is my starting value. So if I started to write that out, my lower bound is going to be 2, and if my bounds differ by 3, then my upper bound is going to be 5. The last thing I have to figure out is just what's my function. 
Well, remember these inside here, those are X values, right? What are you doing to this X value? You're raising it to the fourth. So F of your function is X to the fourth. And this is the definite integral that you are looking for. This limit, if you did, took that limit and got a value, it would be the actual area under the curve or the actual value of that definite integral. So they're actually not that hard once you know how to kind of look at them. Um, it just looks very intimidating from the beginning. So let's look at the next one because they could be written all different ways. It says the following is a right Riemann sum approximation for what definite integral? Okay, they told you it was a right Riemann sum. This one's a little different. You can't go, oh, my bounds, B minus A is 1. No, that's when it's over N. It's B minus A over N. This one has a definite number. So this is an approximation. So I'm stopping somewhere. Well, let's figure out, let's, let's understand this. Let's figure out these X values. Isn't that really 1 half? That says 1 half squared. That says plus 1 squared. That says 1.5 squared etc all the way to 10 squared so if i were drawing along my x-axis i would have one half one 1 1.5 i'm not going to draw all of them all the way up to 10. and if it's a right riemann sum well can't you figure out the width i mean you knew the width was one half i mean it said it right there but do you see the right Riemann sum, whatever that was? That's going to be on your f of x. So where did I start? I started at 0. Now what is my upper bound? My upper bound is 10. What's the last number I plugged in was 10? So I'm going from 0 to 10. What's my function? Well, what are you doing to all these x values you're squaring? And there's my, there's my answer. That's it. Does it make sense that this is 1 half? Well, yeah. Think about if I were to actually label all these lines, how many rectangles would I have? Well, I'd have 20. So 10 minus 0 over, I have 20 boxes. That gives me the 1 half. It matches up. So I'm good to go. Last one. Write two different, what? Write two different definite integrals for the expression below. Well, okay, this one's kind of similar to the first one. They didn't write it with sigma notation. They just kind of wrote it out. This is the actual value because the limit, the n is going to infinity. So right here, I know that my bounds differ by 5 differ by 5 and my function to me the function kind of just screams at you what are you doing to all your x values you're square rooting them now remember how this is the starting value so that would be 4 and if my bounds differ by 5 that's going to be 9 see how I'm adding one of the widths then I go to 2 to the widths 3 to the widths and on and on and on. Plus, guys, look at this last one. What, what number am I plugging in? Looky there, I'm plugging in 9. Interesting. That's what I have there. And so dx. Now you go, okay, great, but it says two different integrals. Well, I wanted to put that because sometimes they disguise it, of course, and get tricky, still differing by 5, but here's the deal. What if they write and y'all think of our properties, this should make sense. <coughs> what if this wasn't the starting value? What if that was actually in the function and our width, I do one five over n, then I do two, three, where would I be starting? Well, I would be starting at zero and then I would be doing one of the widths, two of the widths, and the four is in the function and that would be the exact same integral if I found those. Now that should make sense to you because remember when we did the properties and you think about the transformation, what does, 
what does plus four, what does that do to the trans, what does that do? If I said graph the square root function from four to zero, so of course that's, you know, four, excuse me, four to nine, that would be here. Now shift that to the left, because x plus four would shift it to the left, one, two, three, four. Do you see that same section would be from zero to five? there and so those two integrals are the same so those properties what i'm saying is i usually go to this one first i i look at that as my starting value um and that's how i write it but what i'm saying is what if on the multiple choice they don't write this one but they write this one you have to go oh you know they just they just put the four into the function they just did a property they just did it a different way so you've got to be able to find the actual answer that they that they put in multiple choice okay so practice that and we are good peace out